morning, uh, all the dignitaries on and off the dice and all the student managers. I, Sharman Arora, feel honored to introduce today's first guest speaker, Mr. Praveen Rawal. Sir is the Managing Director, Sales Southeast Asia and India Steelcase, Asia Pacific, the global leader in office modular furniture industry. Sir is responsible for overseeing the India and Southeast Asia business segment. Sir holds an MBA in marketing and possesses over 20 years of sales and management experience in the Asia Pacific region. Sir started his corporate career with Shell Lubricants in 1994 and then he shifted to ESPN Sports in 1998. He worked there for six years. And he was uh, the building block who led the foundation of these companies. He started from the scratch. Sir began his journey with Steelcase in Delhi in 2004. He started from a room, from his bedroom. He worked three years from uh, home and helped to develop the Steelcase India business, which led to rapid growth in market share and success in the country. He managed the sales and project teams across India, including key cities such as Delhi, Bangalore, Hyderabad, and Mumbai for over 10 years. Due to his immense success in India, he was promoted to lead the market and sales teams in Southeast Asia and India in 2015. A strategic thinker and a visionary behind Steelcase, imposing success in the region, Sir and his entire team at Steelcase India and Southeast Asia has forfeited the present and sales of the brand in the Asia Pacific market. May I now request him to please uh, address the audience, Sir, the dice is all yours. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, great weather in Pune as compared to the weather that I was facing yesterday. It was hot and humid in Delhi. So thank you for this weather also, I think. Talking to Sharman today morning in Palash, I, I sort of recounted that uh, they like the weather here, which is why they shifted from Nagpur and uh, Chandigarh into this lovely city. So we've always liked the weather here and, and in Bangalore. So it's a pleasure coming back to Pune to be here at BIIMM. I met uh, uh, Dr. Bala a few years back in our office in Delhi and was really impressed uh, with his very human nature, a thorough gentleman, uh, person who has got great vision. And that prompted us to come back to your campus last year um, in uh, terms of hiring some people from here. So we look forward to more connections with uh, your institute. So I wanted to start by addressing uh, Dr. Archana. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, Dr. Kadam, Dr. Dash, uh, my hosts, Palash and Sharman, all students, all the faculty here, my colleagues from Steelcase, and uh, I don't know if there's media here, but uh, all of you, a great morning. I had a deck ready, actually, to talk about uh, the same things that Dr. Archana mentioned about AI and automation, but I think I'll, I'll take it forward in, in a minute from now. I think it's good for uh, us to talk to all of you about uh, the paces that I've seen in my last 20 years that will possibly benefit all of you, a few of you who immerse into the philosophy of challenging yourself every day at work. We were lucky that we had a year called 1991 when the economy was liberalized and companies from all around the world came to India. We are thankful for that era of liberalization and that's the time when I joined the workforce in 1991. So it's been 27 years now and uh, it was also the advent of a lot of companies coming into the country. So starting my career in 91, I joined uh, Shell which was brand new to India. They were Burma Shell before they went back in 1977 out of India. They came back in the new avatar, tying up with Bharat Petroleum. So I traveled across the country, across the entire states, traveling for the first time and seeing parts of India and trying to find paces for that brand that was new for the, for the market and so also new for customers. The brand had to be regenerated because 1977 was way back. There was a whole new fleet of transporters, fleet owners, mass service stations who didn't know the brand at all. So really challenging times, those four years uh, growing that brand. Post that, I, cha I changed and joined a company called ESPN Star Sports. And I'm sure all of you here who are in love with cricket would want to join ESPN one day. It was the perfect place to be in. Um, we have a new prime minister in Pakistan, Imran Khan. I had the 
I had the uh, pleasure of having uh, lunch, dinners, breakfast with him and Akram and the entire Pakistani team back in Lahore when India was playing Pakistan in 1997. Great times traveling with the Indian cricket team across the world and uh, building the brand from scratch both in advertising and also in affiliate sales. Uh, six and a half, seven years before this offer came calling on Steelcase, I didn't know the brand. I didn't know how to spell it. I got a call from Conferi. And I googled my way through finding out what Steelcase was doing. It's a company for the last 100 years looking at office environments. Very interesting company. They started off with a waste paper basket because uh, cities across the US were getting burnt because of no steel baskets, waste paper baskets. They were all using wooden baskets and smokers would put their smokes, their cigarettes into the baskets and there would be fires in the Chicago area, which also is very prone to fires. So steel case started off in 1912 with the first steel waste paper basket. So this offer came through and I quit my very lucrative job with the ESPN Star Sports to join this organization virtually from my bedroom. Uh, we didn't have any offices in India. It was a new brand. I asked a few of my friends on Wall Street, how's the brand positioned back in the US? They said it's got pricing as high as BMW. So don't take your chances, don't join. But I still joined. Uh, it's been 14 years now. And when I look back those three years when I struggled every single day trying to find my printer, trying to find my next ticket to Bangalore, trying to cut a check to a vendor, trying to sit on a Neil Kamal chair. They were tough moments. So I just want to leave some messages back to all of you is that uh, please do not go up in life for a cozy environment. There would be challenges for all of you and you've been hearing from all speakers yesterday, today and tomorrow. Life would be good fun if you're ready to challenge the status quo. Challenge the very basic concepts of getting comfortable in your environments. If you challenge yourself, you would find things that are new that will make you laugh and smile when you look back. So when I look back in 2004, I feel very nice that from a base of almost zero, uh, we started off and today we are almost at the number two position in India, having almost dominated all the foreign players or all the external players serving landscapes across offices. So Steelcase works with every single corporate across the world because people want to have the best offices. Aspirations are high. They want to sit on the best chairs and we spend years making the best chairs. So we are, we are, we are lucky to be growing in India. We're lucky to be growing in Asia Pac across the world. And these are interesting times. So just want to leave that message back with you. I was also in the staff room right now before, before, having, uh, before coming down here and somebody asked, so a lot of our students come from tier two, tier three cities and tier four cities. I said I come from tier five actually because way back in 1970s, my father used to work for Bokaro Steel Plant and that was a small city, very close to Ranchi. Tier five, possibly or tier four, whatever. But uh, the small cities always give you bearings that stand you for life. They give you values and ethics that stand you for life. So we stand for very basic values at Steelcase and those values are of honesty and ethics and integrity and being transparent. So I would want to leave all of you with this message that please in this very diverse economy in India where we have all kind of uh, people with all motives, try to remain ethical in your life. Try to remain honest. I think we've built the basic foundation of our brand and our company and our people on this basic value that this company has been promoting across the world of being ethical and being integrity in all things. The one last thing that I would want to talk about is about Jugaad. So uh, meeting candidates in India, I think uh, we can't hire from the furniture industry because there is no furniture industry actually from where we can hire because we look at people who are basically sociologists psychologist, social scientist, and anthropologist. Also marketing students, so don't lose heart. We'll, we hire a lot of marketing students. 
but basically with people having social bearings to all of these nuances that help them grow. So I always ask people who come and meet us, so how do you and how do you figure out Jugar in your life? Because Jugar has somewhere got into our DNA. I think we have to somewhere veer away from doing Jugar in our lives because we would not be able to innovate the next best products in this country if we ca keep doing the small minor improvisations to our life. So everybody who says I love Jugar doesn't get hired. Everybody who says I, I get it, I only use it in exceptional situations surely gets a big pass at Steelcase because we believe in doing what is real and not making tweaks to either products or situations or applications. So that was the part that I wanted to share with all of you. I feel proud today entering my 15th year at Steelcase that uh, uh, the economy is challenging us for all that Dr. Archana spoke about today morning about uh, this dystopian philosophy of uh, jobs. Uh, I think none of you should worry because I'm an eternal optimist. Uh, even today, as we all uh, look around in India, I feel very good talking to all of you that uh, we by chance, by default, get invited by all corporates. As India grows, we get into every single campus in India because we are the aspirational brand. Um, we are the biggest brand. And every company would call you right from the Goldman Sachs to the Accentures to the IBMs and to the Haldirams and to Dr. Reddy and to Suzlon to get into the campuses and build up their spaces for their people. So the good news for all of you today morning on a Saturday, happy Onam to all of you, <laughs> is uh, that uh, we are up on the uprise. The IT exports as per NASCOM are slated to grow to $250 billion. We are a $2.6 trillion economy of which 10% comes from our exports in IT. And that is still only like 10% of the global share. We are building campuses for big companies like Oracle, like HP, like SAP, Goldman Sachs, Accenture, IBM, Barclays. I can go on. All of these companies are doing what? They came to India in 1991 and stayed on for doing business processes, outsourcing, BPO jobs, audio and video. And then they stayed back for the last decade because they said, hey, my data work can easily go into the process work. So they stayed back for the process engineering work. And now they are sort of consolidating their offices across India into one big campus. So I would talk to you from the real estate point of view and getting you optimism today morning on this lovely conclave that you're having for these three days that guys, please, when I say guys, I mean gender neutrality, girls also, absolutely, um, is that please sort of skill yourself and keep skilling yourself. I think the big thing that goes on for, for all global brands is for you to be skilled, for you to have read well. So I was talking to both my hosts today morning when they were getting me from the hotel to here, I said, what are your current reads? What books are you reading? Books and reads will keep you going forward always in life. Please let you know that as companies become more interconnected and more global, they need global managers. So all of you sitting here are going to be global managers in a year from now, in two years, are here undergraduate students in four years from now. So please lace yourself with skills that help you in this globalized, interconnected world where you cannot do anything in a silo any longer. Work is no more repetitive. Work is more, no more linear. Work is no more predictive. Work is disruptive. Work is creative. And for that, you need to lace yourself every single day with possibly reading the best reads. My latest read at this point in time is Sales EQ from Jeb Blanc. I just finished a book on Scrum, on Scrum Networks and how does Scrum Network work. So I think you should all try finishing at least four books in a month to keep yourself a pace when you take up interviews next year with your global customers. So moving on, I'll just take you through the business environment in India, what we get to see in India, and these are all applications that we see in India. So it'll be, it's going to be interesting for you. So what are you all reading in your curriculum? Very clearly, curriculums are aimed towards convergent thinking. 
what we need from all of you in the global world is divergent thinking. Convergence and divergence. Pedagogies that have been designed in the last decade or for the last many decades have all been designed for convergent thinking. But the world outside that you'll be joining in a, in a very few months or years would be based around divergent thinking. Your employers would be asking you, so what, what would you get to the job that has an impact? In our study at Steelcase, we've done five studies already around India. Gen Y studies, we found very clearly one big thing that stood out was the impact that the Gen Y would create on their work. So please immerse this in your DNA that you have to create impact to your work. And how would you create impact is by being separate and different. So ideas are going to be the currency of the new economy. Everybody is looking out for new ideas out there. That what new ideas does this team have? What new ideas does this individual have? What new ideas does this vertical team have? So that's where the word is going to go. We study the work, the workers in the workplace very intensely. And we also find out, you all sitting in this lovely room here, places shape behavior. And behavior over time is culture. So very clearly, the Balaji society has a culture of its own that's immersed in all of you. You will have to, in some time, in a few months, have to immerse into the new culture that you go into when you join organizations. And every organization is different. Let me tell you, working for three and four of these companies, I've found cultures very different. Very, very different. It's also interesting, if you've read the book Globalization 3.0 from Pankaj Ghemawat, he talks about cultures. Uh, and uh, cultures hide more from their own participants, even more than what the participants know about. So try understanding cultures from a point of view that you want to understand more about this global world. We've been understanding India for the last 17, 20 years now. We know India, bits of it but we need to know the global culture also. So try picking up books that talk about the global culture because you're going to be working one day to transfer around geographies and work with global colleagues who would want you to be successful working in global teams. Um, since I am talking in the era where you will be all getting jobs in the next one year and two years and four years, we're talking about the creative shift. India has come back now in a very big way to keeping all the jobs. We have not lost any jobs. We've lost jobs to Philippines, Manila. All the jobs that we were doing back in Delhi, BPO centers and Chennai BPO centers, because they all found that there were synergies back in Manila which were better suited for voice. Voice, because the voice of the Philippines people is much better suited for customers back in Europe and in Americas as compared to Indians. So we had the 90s basically around BPO work, both voice and data, but that work migrated from India to Philippines in a very big way. But what we kept back was all the work around data. And like we all say, data is the new, new fuel. Data is the new oxygen. So that data work has stayed back in India, that's the good news. Steelcase worked very clearly and very, very solidly with uh, Satya Nadella's company, Microsoft, back in the US, thinking about how can we help Creative work happen at organizations. Creativity is the new fuel to innovation. Creativity is everything. Creativity is going to be the new habit in organizations. So how can you help wo create work happen? You all want, you all every morning ask about what's the new app? Where did the apps come from? They came actually from organizations thinking through creatively about how do they want to solve the new app so we worked with Microsoft in uh, developing the creative shift, creative environment in offices. You're all going to be working in offices. I think uh, as cloud technologies and as uh, the cloud disperses people from offices, our offices, the culture is something that's getting them back into the offices because every company wants its cultures to be permeating deep into people. Uh, when I look at the next decade, I also look at disruption, but what? mellows me down is when I look at customers saying, hey, so your products are warranted for how many years? And I say 10 years, 12 years, lifetime. They feel good about it, which means that they are seeing disruption, but they're also seeing life beyond disruption of staying back in India or any other geography and building up their base with building new offices and new work. So there's life there. 
how does creativity happen? Creativity fosters teamwork. Creativity connects everything. Creativity is in the detail. It builds experiences. Creativity asks why. What do we need, need from all of you is innovation. Creativity is all about problem solving. Creativity is all about solving the wicked problems through, through a design thinking process. We all thought design thinkers were going to be separate. There would be a Eureka moment that will come through when there will be an innovation happening, not any longer. Every team has to innovate and create new ways through design thinking on their teams to find better ways of aligning and working together. Design thinking is no more the preserve of few people now. Design thinking is the preserve of all employees who work on teams to find solutions. We also want to sort of talk to you about the creative process because as you are all here in college, in the school, you also have this modes of finding project work. Working on projects, working on teams, working with other institutes in the Pune area or across the, across the globe. There are modes in creative thinking which involves convergence and divergence of thoughts. If you go through modes of creative thinking and I would want and I will prompt all of you to pick up that book from, from our uh, IDEO uh, curator, Tim Brown, go through his book. He talks about the me moments and the we moments. We all sort of want to come together when we do project work. We've always found in India, there's better productivity when we work in groups of two. That's called dyadic work. Groups of two is called dyadic work. The best productivity comes when you're not working in silos, but working in groups of two. Dyadic work is at its best. Creative process is both non-rhythmic, non-predictable. You've got to come together to prototype ideas, got to incubate ideas, experiment it, Converse it, incubate it, and then socialize it. So I wanted to spend today these 30 minutes that are left now on thinking through how can we help you think through the design thinking process as you go on and take jobs in few months from now. So you need to be all involved in generative, generative collaboration at school because generative collaboration helps you create new solutions. I would then skip up to what we discussed earlier about artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and human analytics. Uh, we recently published a book uh, at Steelcase. We do this very often, uh, like you have the Harvard Business Review. Uh, we also publish uh, a study of workplaces and uh, work modes in offices, organizations across the world. It's called the 360 degree, and the latest edition is around fast forward. We're looking forward to the next 10 years, and how would offices change in terms of helping you work in the new offices of tomorrow. Last 15 years, seeing the trends, I have seen huge changes in organizations. How closed offices have opened up to open offices. Managers, superiors are sitting outside with their teams trying to solve wicked problems. Try immersing yourself into the fast forward modes of learning. There's going to be sensors at your work. There's going to be microphones in your work. There's going to be Outlook calendars, and there's going to be emails. Companies in Palo Alto right now are using all of these modes to track employee activity. How are you working? What modes are you working on? We are actually putting sensors now in the workplaces to understand at what pace are you working so that we can capture your insights, your work modes, your intuitive zones, your emotive, your emotional connect, and that all reports back, and then we can architecture rooms and offices accordingly. So active agents in the gig economy, the gig economy is growing, and we need to be ready for it. Uh, we got to navigate through oceans of data. We got to use all of these things as our uh, playground. Work will be virtual, rooms will be augmented, and we will have to go through and explore through all of them. So get ready for the gig economy. We also need to look at wellness. Now, wellness is not limited to wellness in terms of work-life balance. Wellness also is, is limited to emotional and cognitive wellness at work. How well do you create solutions 
that add an impact to the company's productivity and to the bottom line. Very, very important for the, for the future. Other good thing that we saw, thought about is how can you make this room as a team member? Think about it when you go back today after this session. How could you make your rooms both in the institute, also in the dormitories, in the hostels that you stay in, also outside private, private places that you stay in, how could you make that room as your team member? How could it support you virtually and in an augmented manner? Because the day is not far when VR and AR would drive a lot of verticalization of things that are on the horizontal surface today. Things on the horizontal surface would go on the vertical surfaces very shortly, and you'll have to annotate things that go on there. So you've got to look at the future. Please prepare yourself for the next 10 years, not for the next two years. Please. Uh, the other good thing I wanted to speak about was uh, a survey that we did on, did on culture, and this will be very interesting for all of you. Uh, we uh, get our inspiration a lot from, uh, like I said, sociologists, anthropologists, social scientists. We also work with very, very closely with people like Susan Cain. Uh, another good book, read. Uh, recommendation to all of you is about Quiet. Please read this book called Quiet from Susan Cain. Uh, we work closely with her because she said, uh, in the open spaces, in the offices that we're going to go in, we would have both extroverts and introverts. And they both work very differently. And we are 70-30 in this world between extroverts and introverts. How do you want to work? And we've done that uh, through studying the MBTI, Myers-Briggs type indicator studies. How do people work together in teams? I talk to you more from the perspective of a global organization because my boss is a German for the last 10 years. I work with eight other people on my Asia Pacific leadership team. None of them is an Indian. We have somebody from America, somebody in Australian, somebody are German, somebody from China, India. Which is why I talk to you about culture code because you need to respect cultures of other organizations also and other, other countries also to be successful as you take up new jobs because every company is now interconnected and globalized. We were studying uh, cultures and as I talked talk to you about uh, the room as a partner, room as a team member, I also talked to you about the interconnected workplace where uh, everything will be connected, people, technology, spaces will be connected. Um, space is almost the body language of an organization. So when I came into your campus today and a lot of you were standing on the stairs, there was a red carpet and there were open vistas, high ceilings, an auditorium that works really well, look, looks very good, it could be compared to any auditorium anywhere in the world, that talks about the organization that you all belong to. Because like I said, space is the body language of an organization. So try building spaces like your rooms. They tell about you actually, the way you stack your things up, your, your library, your books, your uh, virtual space, your physical space, I think it tell, tells about you. So spaces have to support people when they come to work by both motivating them, elevating them, and getting the best out of them. We found out in our studies that uh, the way we sit, the way we move, had a lot, a lot of change in the last 20 years. With the advent of small devices, like the iPhone, which has around been 10 years now, we found that there were nine new seating postures that we were sitting on. We were gliding, we were scrumming, we were hunching, we have nine new postures that came into the workplace, also into the, also into the, into the classroom, I'm sure, because people want to work in teams of two and four now, so you, you need your seats, your seating to be more agile and more morphable and more fungible. So interesting things that are going on, um, I'll just take you through very fast uh, um, on uh, the six dimensions of culture in India, studying Hofstede and uh, Edward uh, Hall, uh, they are social scientists and anthropologists, they come out with uh, this dimensions of culture. We study it pretty closely to understand how do we need to design our next round of products that go in a space effectively. So studying Hofstede and uh, Edward Hall, uh, they talk a lot about the power distance index. So for all of you, uh, have you studied uh, Hofstede? Can I have a response, please? Okay, Edward Hall. Okay, Pankaj Ghimawat. Good, super. 
So, so go back to reading this. I'm just making recommendations today because I sort of thought I'd leave something behind for all of you to, as homework. Um, please uh, understand power distance index. Uh, a lot of our offices, even with the best concepts, even with data becoming virt virtual, would be driven by our, our model of autocracy in this country. I think we need to change that. If you look at uh, this, this particular chart here, uh, when we studied models, you could see India sort of going, leaning towards, towards autocracy and not towards consultative. We are more driven by, if you go across and see a lot of, I'll say, organizations uh, across Pune or across Chennai, you'll find that there is a separate floor for the top team, there's a separate room for the top boss. I think all of those things have to break away one day. If you were supposed to be making your company successful. So the power distance index is very interesting to read about. Are we a nation of high context or low context? What do you think? Can I have some responses, please? I want to make it two-way. As a country, are we more masculine or more feminine? Super. We are aggressive. That's masculine. Nothing to do with genders. It's about being aggressive. Um, are we more individualistic or collective in our approach? Man, you have all the right answers. Absolutely. Good. Tell me also about this. Um, how well are we suited to the uncertainty tolerance? Okay. So here I think I'll, I'll correct you. I think we are very tolerant because when I have to do a meeting in Mumbai, I'm never sure whether I reach there in 20 minutes or in two hours. I don't know if my train comes on time. I don't know if my flight takes off on time because we are never sure. Uh, we've also studied India. Our infrastructure lags. Uh, are acute and they sort of make us more tolerant towards uncertainties in life. So we've braced really well. We are ready for uncertainties, which is very good. In fact, I was talking recently and I was hearing somebody recently at Cornet, which is a real estate conference. Uh, she was the head of uh, Fidelity and she said, I like India more because uh, there are no traffic jams. I said, no. What is this about traffic jam? She said, at least when I'm, I'm in Australia, she was globally traveled, and she said, when I'm in Australia or in Fiji, I get stuck in traffic jams which go on for two to three hours. We find a way in India by going the wrong side and not stifling traffic, but we find a way through our traffic. So there is, there is some sanity in this madness that makes us keep going. Delhi for 10 years had one runway when we had 1,000 flights taking off and landing every single day, and we managed it thank God, without any collisions. But we are an amazing nation that finds its way through, I will not say through Jugaad, but through being really agile at finding solutions. So please study cultures. I think we design our spaces based on our culture because as much global we might get, we spoke about it today morning at the conference room, that our culture is embedded in us. And I think we need to make a change, if you need to make a change. But I think for all of you coming from tier one, two, three, four, five, six cities, Try making those changes uh, to be successful. Very, very important. Uh, that's where we rated. So that's for India. We studied 17 countries, and we found India autocratic, uh, consultative. Uh, we found it masculine, like you all said. We found it really tolerant towards uncertainty. We also found it really high context. We have cues like cull. If you think about it, what does cull mean for all of you? What does cull mean to all of you? Tomorrow or yesterday? Many a kam kal kar diya is yesterday. We believe in karma. For us, the only nation in the world, kal means both yesterday also and tomorrow also. It's a culture that, that mesmerizes and confuses and convolutes the world. Enjoy it. I really enjoy it working in a global company when all of this come out as nuances for India and Indians. So please enjoy it. Um, so work happens in the office. Noisy and dense environments, log work days, boss decides controls. So all of those things that we found out studying Gen Y at the workplace, and you're all part of it. That's India for all of you. I'll just go through very fast. Uh, we're thinking about the disruption, which is all there to say, like Dr. 
Archana said, uh, and like we say, three jobs out of five have not been identified. Three jobs out of five have not been identified. Like Satya says about his company, all companies in this world would be software companies. And like Steelcase says, all companies would be technology companies. So please brace yourself to be working for a technology company, for a software company, because supply chains would get really developed, curated to supply and support geographies across the world. Be agile, hack your space, find solutions, find sanity in your spaces, and that's going to really help you well. So um, that's where it is. That's part of my presentation. Thank you. Good morning, sir. I'm Ashika from uh, Marketing Specialization. Do you see evidence that uh, this consultative culture that you foster in the workplace encourages your people to uh, contribute to ideas and take risks, since we also have our alumni sitting yeah. over here? Absolutely. Uh, we cannot think of uh, not being consultative because uh, my HR is in a matrix organization reporting to HR back in the US. My finance reports back to the US. And I work with a leadership team where it's a matrix organization. So you all know matrix organizations. It's a true matrix where I've got to work with people who don't report into me directly. To make it successful, either I have my own team who sort of follow me, who are devout, devout supporters of me. That doesn't happen any longer in our organizations now. You get people who are suited to the organization, not suited to the boss. You got to work with people in a consultative approach trying to find solutions to wicked problems that might reach out of India. If I need to supply a product to Goldman Sachs in India, because India also has a very diverse thing. You are all in, in Pune. Pune is one of our biggest markets. I was talking to the head of uh, a company recently in Magarpata, and he says, we have a diverse problem which is not there in any other, any other company, country in the world. He says, my people work on processes in the morning, then they work on digital content in the evening, and then the team last works on IT and IT solutions towards the night working with the US counterparts. My workspace needs to support all these three people, all these three modes, and all of the three, these three time zones. Think about it. You're not only sharing your colleagues, you're also sharing your workplace. And you've got to be consultative. That's the only way to go. That's the only panacea to running organizations now. Good morning, sir. My name is Ashwari Shivastav, and sir, it's our privilege to have you here. Thank you for coming. Sir, my question is, uh, how do you see IKEA as competition, and do you have any plans regarding rural market, because it comprises of 70% of India? Sure, perfect. Uh, IKEA has been around, uh, they've been, we've been working in economies and geographies where IKEA has been around. IKEA is more uh, specialist for the home segment, and we are more specialist for the office segment. So. Uh, we don't find a threat from IKEA in any which way. So there is ample scope there for coexisting. That's an organization that's been doing really well on the home segment and uh, for SMEs, small and medium-sized enterprises. We are mainly into the big campuses, working with the global majors. We only work with leading organizations, like we say, companies who lead their market in the vertical. So we've never seen IKEA in the last 30 years come across and work with leading organizations. So that point is taken care of. So we keep thinking about doing stuff in the office space, and, uh, and we're doing it well for the last so many years. So that's one. On the rural front, uh, like you said, 70% of India is rural. Absolutely, we recognize that, and we appreciate that point of life. We are starting to work with the government recently. So the good news is that when um, a few years back, uh, Mr. Manmohan Singh wanted to buy, buy, buy or sit on the best chair, they ended up buying and looking at a steel case chair. So that's where it starts from, the government. We are, look, we are working now with the government, we are working with the government organizations, CPWD, PWD, and getting our products across to various centers across the country. I think we are, at this point, not ready. Uh, but I'm not saying we'll not be ready, because very clearly the design hubs for all organizations across the world have to come to India. Last few years, last 10 years, 19 global hubs came to Asia Pacific. Asia Pacific has now 29% of global hubs. 38% are in the US and 25% are in Europe. So virtually Asia is now leading in having global hubs. Once we get the global hub to be in India, we start working with the local the tier 7 and tier 8 possibly. We will not go down to the, to the village levels and blocks. But uh, 
absolutely delights us. We are already sort of involved with the CRR, CSR initiative by opening schools. We are doing one school in Mahindragarh district uh, in, a, in a village and that's where our touch points are going to be. We are working with the government on ITI sponsored schools and we're getting to ITI. So that's where we're starting off. We're just about 10 years old, I'll say, or 14 years. Uh, but the way to go absolutely is to be having, I'll say, every Indian sitting on Steelcase products one day. That's it. Uh, very good morning, sir. To your left front, sir. Yeah. So uh, these days we can see a lot of companies which are moving towards work from home. So do you think it would be a, a problem or threat to a company like Steelcase because they are completely dealing with uh, 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 chairs and tables of uh, those big companies? Okay, good, good question, very nice question. You, uh, very valid question, I was expecting it to come like the IKEA question. Um, work from home is absolutely desirable. We have uh, both genders at work and we respect uh, more women joining the workforce. They have, uh, they have personal commitments, so do men. So very clearly we respect people working from home, first. Second is, uh, would that impact our uh, our sales or our volumes, I think not. Because like I also said earlier, we've also been working with companies like Amazon, uh, also with companies like Flipkart. Uh, both these companies virtually want to sit on steel case chairs only. So the challenge is that when you work from home, confidential data can be compromised. So virtually only that work will go home where confidential data is not getting to the home, which stays within the purview of the organization. So virtually repetitive jobs, predictable jobs, calling jobs would go home, but not confidential information. Data is sacred. Data is very sacred to organizations. They would not let it go home. And the third point that I would want to mention is when companies want to create their own culture, uh, the culture gets created in a space where people can meet one to one. So when you meet one-to-one -one in a campus, in an office, that's where the culture gets, gets built and I think companies want to get people back. I would not want to give the example of Yahoo because Yahoo failed actually. Um, Marisa Meyer was the big example of calling back people into the offices in 2013, but that didn't work for them. But very clearly, she did that in 2013 because she felt that people were not able to understand the vision and the mission of the organization sitting back at home. So, People have to come back. Uh, the big thing about India is, why do, we want, why do people want to come to office? Because you know what? Our infrastructure lacks in India. Want people to get a good cup of coffee, great lunch, air conditioning, best working environment, which is why also people want to come back to the offices. So that's one of the biggest aspirations why when we build inspirational offices, people want to join us and want to join the environments that we create. Good morning, good morning sir. Good morning, sir. Sir, my name is Sajal Kumar and my question is that, sir, in Indian buyer's market, how can we utilize the concept of competitive advantage that is either in terms of product or in terms of price or in terms of services to compete with other cutthroat competitors? Good. Um, competition actually, uh, the way I define competition is actually a product, a byproduct of our own minds. Yes. Um, if the product has taken insights yes, sir. from the marketplace yes, sir. and we observed things really well. Like I said, nine new postures at the workplace. If you incorporate those nuances in your products, you will not fail. So virtually I think every product has to have insights. If the insights are there, like squeeze to expand, the iPhone feature, uh, when we got, uh, when we build our chairs, I'll, I'll take you through an example of the Leap chair that we developed way back in uh, 15 years back, the Leap technology, when you go back on the chair, when you recline on an airline seat, the economy seat, when you recline back, the seat goes forward. We were seeing this that people want to grab their space. When they grab their space, they get comfortable. Oh, this is my space now. Then they go back. When they go back, suddenly they get away from the vision and reach zone on the computer, laptop, whatever. When you get away from your vision and reach zone, that's a problem. So we developed a mechanism called natural glide. When you go back, the seat glides forward automatically. I give you that example because I'm saying, if you design for the Indian marketplace, Indian customer, Indian consumer, Chinese consumers all want to have a nap for 30 minutes. We had a big problem. 
how do we make our chairs comfortable so that the Chinese could take a nap after lunch for 30 minutes? So we had to incorporate the headrest into all our chairs. In India, because we are short frame, same as Chinese, we don't want to sleep after lunch. We want to work hard. So very different geographies, economies. If companies imbibe those insights, you know what, you cannot fail. Price absolutely is a determinant, but I'm, I'm telling you, you only lose deals 20% of the times on price. 80% you lose it because your emotional question with the customer is missing. Sir, uh, but uh, I think that uh, most of the startups are uh, uh, lacking behind the concept of competitive strategy in India, especially in India. So what is the strategy that we follow so that we can think a lot about competitive strategy? Like I always say, we need to have a founder's mindset. So all the startups are funded and I, I would say Infosys also was a startup, so was Vipro, so was all of these companies that were I think if you have a founder's mindset of using your resources well, commercializing your idea, incubating it, socializing it, taking it forward, having the right customer segments, I don't think you'll fail. I know of a lot of my friends in this startup ecosystem who are doing well, who've got the Series A, Series B funding, and they're doing fine. I think the problem is when the funds that we get initially get blown off because of lack of experience. I think that, that's what lacks a bit of our industry today. So experience is a must. Thank you, sir. What are the changes uh, this acquisition will take to the Indian education system? Which, which acquisition? Uh, with the Smith system. OK. Yeah. So uh, as this is the acquisition globally, so what are the changes it will take to the Indian education system? The, the Smith system. Smith. Yes, sir. Ah, OK, got it. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Um, we are seeing, like I, like I mentioned earlier also, I think uh, liberal arts. Uh, liberal arts is where is the place to go actually. If you look at what I presented very clearly around sociology and anthropology was around uh, liberal arts discipline and that's going to go. So we are seeing changes which is why a lot of liberal art colleges are coming up in India. Pedagogies are changing and we are now rolling out curriculums. We men, when we work with schools, we are rolling out curriculums that talk about divergent thinking. And, and when we look at divergent thinking, we're getting into a lot of international schools right now trying to build up an ecosystem of architecture around schools which is actually built from devices that you're all logged on. So when you get logged on to devices, they give systems back to us in this, uh, in this economy and then architecturally we can change things. If I talk to you about the BMW school or the D school of Paris, uh, they have spaces where they can prototype things which takes only seven seconds to walk to. You lose ideas if you don't prototype it or don't capture it within a particular time frame. I won't say 7, 10, 14 because that's generalization. But we need all of those things to happen, which is why we're saying we're taking to a lot of whiteboarding in our environments. Um, one of our companies called Polyvision is a whiteboard company out of Belgium. We do a lot of whiteboarding because when ideas occur, you got to capture them. They're gone in a minute because there's so much of distraction in the environment. So try reading this other book called Deep Work. Um, I don't know the author, I forgot about him. But Deep Work is about how do we actually do deep work with staying away from distraction, possibly on weekends, so do that. So we, we acquired Smith Systems to get into, the, uh, into schools, into environments where uh, we were not able to ideate, better, ideate faster because uh, nowadays organizations like Steelcase would take a lot of time to ideate solutions because it takes us a lot of time. But the easy route is to go across, across and acquire companies that have the same culture, the same product portfolios that help us then develop product solutions faster. That was the reason for Smith Systems. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. To your right, here. To your right. So my name is Roger. I wanted to ask, is, uh, does Steelcase have a business set of wherein they share workspaces like uh, companies like WeWork? And if not, why, why not? I mean, that would be a great venture to get into. Steelcase building co-working spaces? Yes, sir. Perfectly. If you go back on the Steelcase website and uh, Google, uh, the first company to come out with a co-working space was Steelcase actually, uh, called the WorkSpring. Uh, it was called the WorkSpring, where people and companies could come in and work through, through our spaces. We are investing uh, a lot in co-working spaces. Uh, we recently uh, did a big uh, tie-up with Jusco. And, and Naked Space uh, in China and in Singapore. 
and we're working with them in developing spaces. We are working at the high end of, of co-working and uh, with ANSR in Bangalore. ANSR is getting a lot of companies to India. Uh, a lot of captive work is happening in India. So we're working with them in developing high end co-working spaces because basic co-working spaces is not what we're interested in. We want to give that higher elevated level of virtualization and augmentation to spaces that helps people think better. Good morning, sir. Good. Sir Pornamasi here, welcome to Balaji Society. Sir, is it very drastically different or how challenging it really is building spaces across geographies and different cultures, even though the offices we're talking about are global in nature? Perfectly, yes. Um, lunch, I'll give you a small example. I was visiting uh, HP in Singapore and uh, lunchtime and there was nobody in the office. There were few Indians left behind in the cafe space having their own lunch, carrying their own boxes. Whereas when you go across to an Accenture campus or IBM or SAP or Ford in India, everybody's having lunch inside the office, which is what led to the big story about the Dabbawalas in India. Now, how can you not localize or things in India that suit the Indians? I always get asked, why do we need to have a table tennis table in India uh, by my colleagues back in Minneapolis or Michigan? Because we are a young, young country. There's no other country in this world which is adding 10 million people to the works, workforce every year. We are the youngest country in the world. Our young people need spaces where they can relax, rejuvenate, also incubate ideas. So spaces of a global organization also need to look a bit local, though global. So that's a very fine art for uh, global companies working with the global design firms. So Gensler or HOK are design firms that are based in the US, but they're also based in every geography. So what's happening is that the companies out of US, Europe would work with global design firms and then curate few spaces to be local, but majorly to be global. Thank you, sir. Good, Good morning, morning, sir. sir. My name is Annapurni. I'm from BIMM HR. My question is uh, that uh, in near future, there will be paradigm shift from per permanent employees to short-term workers that, are gig, that is gig economy. So what all will be the legal challenges faced by organizations in this part? What will be the greater challenges, you said? Legal challenges. The legal challenges? Faced by the organizations Perfect. in gig, gig economy. Yeah. At this point also, to your question, we have 35% people back in the US who are freelancers. And we're having a growing number of people in Europe also who are going to be freelancers, and in India also. Uh, we are still figuring out the legal challenges, like I said, confidential data. That's one thing that the companies have still not figured out about what do they want to outsource and not outsource. The cloud is helping us in a lot of ways of going through the legalities of uh, sharing confidential data. I think there will be IP uh, addresses that will be happening that will be separate for organizations outsourcing work and doing some captive work. Even in India today, for a lot of companies that have captives, when we say captives, which means an IBM having an IBM in India. IBM also outsources to Infosys and to Vipro and to CTS. Why do you have captives? Because that captive only deals with the most sensitive confidential data. When you outsource work to Infosys on the cloud or whatever, I think there is something that you can outsource which is confidential, but not seminal to the growth of the organization which is something in development. And then you have NDA signed. So I am virtually signing an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, every time we do a contract with any company. So the NDAs would come into force in all of the legalities that we do. And that's the binding factor now, tying us with every organization, that you would not share our design ideation, you would not share our design principles, you will not share our design products, and you will not share our pricing. So working with Capgemini, Capgemini is really huge now. They are creating a lot of jobs in India along with IEGATE. Um, we're doing the campus in Airoli, and that's the NDA that we've signed with them, that we're designing work for you. They also signed an NDA with us, and we signed it with them. It's mutual. So it's developing. That's a very nice question from you to ask. Uh, freelancers would grow, absolutely, because people would change and go from one job to the other job. Absolutely, yes. So my name is Sukant Sinha. Uh, we are enlightened by your presentation. Thank you for that. Uh, sir, I, uh, while I was going through your uh, Steelcase uh, LinkedIn account, 
uh, there it was mentioned it's steel case was also serving the healthcare and education uh, market so my question is why a company like steel case felt the need of uh, creating healthy communities by serving in he uh, healthcare sector and what is the business pur purpose behind that you ask only about healthcare or also education uh, uh, healthcare healthcare super yeah um like i said space whether it's space at an airport space at a hospital or space at a school space is what excites us so when we look at space and we look at efficiencies and productivities we get answers because we have got so much of knowledge around space that we get excited you will not believe this taking my my basic training 15 years back on education we called it it was called that time steel case nurture and now it's called steel case health we still had the ecograms that came out the x-rays you would see x-rays then when it came out the doctors used to put it on on a on a lighted surface to read it and then they would go around doing like this there was no surface that the doctor could read the x-ray reports in a manner that was not going to stress him or her we got really interested when we saw waiting lounges where the waiting lounge experience was a bad experience for patients who were really suffering so all of these things helped us synthesize that we needed to get into the space to help patients doctors nurses everybody and i think we've been investing in spaces with with products also with education of building spaces that make everybody feel comfortable you can't have a patient waiting for hours without being entertained or without being taken care of i think we did all of that by building spaces the reception spaces uh, that helped our patients feel more comfortable sitting on spaces that we curated for them observing them for years of what did we need to give them the space that you develop for a customer suffering from one ailment to the other ailment is very different so nobody was doing that and that prompted us to get into both education and healthcare so as much as uh, i believe innovation and creativity it is not directly proportional to the uh, customer satisfaction uh but still creativity and innovation they are the key to success for everybody right now so sir what are what exactly are the parameter uh, parameters that are used to evaluate innovation when we are coming up with one yeah it shows directly in, in sales results so creativity is the fuel to innovation right. creativity is the juggernaut that fuels innovation and uh, after you innovate a solution innovate a product solution service whatever i think the end result very clearly is in comfort is in evaluation is in sales results all of that and they are a good reflection whether your innovation worked or didn't work right sir thank you well words are not enough to tell you how these pearls of wisdom are going to help us in navigating our curriculum and the way sir has addressed is impeccably exemplary while sir shared his insights on the creative shift creativity is the new cure and six dimensions of culture sir also advised us to not go for cozy environment rather go for challenges which will make you smile at the end of the day sir also talked about values which come from small cities and the fact that steel case works on foundation of basic values of honesty ethics integrity and transparency we acquired a lot from today's session and we assure you to put these values in practice on behalf of bimm i thank you sir for providing your gracious presence to join us today and enhance our horizon of knowledge we are profusely elated to experience a fountain of illuminating ideas and inspiration from you